Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia records 15 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The government is planning for a phased reopening of St. Lucia's economy. And the Ministry of Education announces that Term 3 will be a virtual term. Hello and thank you for joining us at the Information Command Center for the national response to COVID-19 as we bring you the latest developments. St. Lucia records its 15th confirmed case of COVID-19. The chief medical officer speaking Sunday on the national television network NTN, the Information Command Center for the National Response to COVID-19, noted significant improvements in the adherence to stipulated protocols by the public. Commending members of the public for their cooperation, she said the fight is not yet over. More in this report. As of April 13, 2020, the World Health Organization reported a total of 1,773,084 confirmed cases of COVID-19 globally, with 111,652 deaths. There are now 610,742 confirmed cases in the region of the Americas, with a total of 23,759 deaths. The affected region includes the Dominican Republic with 2,967 cases, Haiti 31, Barbados 68, Jamaica 69, Cuba 669, Dominica 16, Grenada 14, Trinidad and Tobago 112, Guyana 37, St. Lucia 15, Antigua and Barbuda 21, Bahamas 41, St. Vincent and the Grenadines 12, Guadeloupe 143, Martinique 156, Puerto Rico 897, St. Barthelme 6, Aruba 92, St. Martin 33, U.S. Virgin Islands 51, and Cayman Islands 53. As of April 12, 2020, St. Lucia recorded a total of 15 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The first two cases were repatriated to the United Kingdom between March 24 and 25, 2020, and four of the remaining cases have since recovered and been discharged from hospital care. Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Balmar george indicated that last week the public health team at the department also took the opportunity to step back, review what has been put in place, assess its position in the curve, analyze the data so far, and prepare strategic pathway on the way forward with St. Lucia's national response to COVID-19. In summary, we note that 77% of our cases are female. The majority of the cases fall into the category of 45 to 49 years of age. 64% of cases report a travel history. To date, all of the confirmed cases are recovering well with no complications. We continue to report zero deaths of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. The contact tracing process has had significant gains in identifying people at greater risk of exposure and bringing individuals with symptoms into care in a timely manner. This success is in great measure the result of the willingness of citizens to collaborate with our teams, and we at the Ministry of Health are very grateful for that support. In January 2020, during stage one of COVID-19 planning, the main objective was source control. During this phase, the public health strategies included the preparation and completion of COVID-19 national plan, establishment of the COVID-19 coordinating committee, regular consultation with regional public health agencies, activation of the National Health Security Committee chaired by the Cabinet Secretary, extensive health education, strengthening and monitoring of the ports, instituting of travel restrictions to reduce importation from high-risk areas, healthcare facility preparation, procurement of personal protective equipment, extensive training of healthcare workers, including fire service and police and non-health stakeholder consultations. As the country moved into stage two with the confirmation of important cases and the start of community spread, the main objective was containment, to slow down the increase in cases, to flatten the curve. The chief medical officer noted that the public health strategies included aggressive public education, exhaustive case finding and contact tracing, 
the establishment of local testing, the three hotel quarantine sites, the establishment of the respiratory clinics at strategic points to ensure access to care, the setup of the respiratory hospital, increased medical human resource capacity, with the arrival of the Cuban doctors and nurses, the use of the 311 hotline for dissemination of general COVID-19 information, the establishment of clinical mobile phone services to support medical and psychological care. In anticipation of in-country transmission was the implementation of more rigid social distancing measures, which included the cancellation of masquerade gatherings, the closure of schools, the closure of the ports and cruise industry, the establishment of the national curfew and a 24-hour shutdown period. Although St. Lucia has not quite reached stage three, which is identified by the establishment of community spread. Many of the measures related to stage three are being implemented as part of a proactive approach. This includes the activation of NIMAC by the Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney, the establishment of the Unified Command Center from the Office of the Prime Minister, the establishment of the curfew and the 24 hour shutdown. This present stage that we are in right now is critical. We need to keep focused on sustaining the gains made nationally in keeping the curve flat. The chief medical officer indicated that it is imperative that everyone works together to keep the population safe. Everybody must take personal responsibility to facilitate the process. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney announces a phased approach to the reopening of St. Lucia's economy. During his address on Sunday, he indicated that the 10-hour curfew will continue in addition to the opening of hardware and home service stores. Details in this report. My fellow St. Lucians, um, first of all... Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney addressing the nation on Sunday on the National Television Network, the Information Command Center for the National Response to COVID-19, expressed gratitude to the frontliners who continue to sacrifice for the health and safety of all St. Lucians. The Prime Minister also thanked members of the public for their change in behavior and adhering to the protocols implemented. Based on the advice of the Chief Medical Officer, the Cabinet of Ministers has taken a number of decisions, including the extension of the 10-hour curfew, the Prime Minister explained. The Cabinet has agreed to maintain the existing partial shutdown, scale-down operations for the period of April 14th until April 26, 2020. We've agreed to expand the activities under the hardware service as well as home suppliers to include emergency renovation and maintenance activities at the household level to facilitate water storage, plumbing maintenance in preparation for the drought alert. And I know that there are many solutions that are handymen and have probably been equally frustrated that they're at home and there's so many things that they could have done at home. So this is to help you be able to get access to the materials that you would need to be able to continue repairing your own homes as well as preparing your home for the drought and certainly preparing your home for the upcoming hurricane season. The Prime Minister noted that the Cabinet is planning a phased reopening of the economy. However, the partial shutdown continues for the duration stated. The Prime Minister also highlighted the commercial entities to come on stream in the first instance, which includes hardware and home service stores. He added that there must be strict adherence to the protocol or else consequences are to follow. The hardware service will also include home suppliers and activity stores such as SNS, Voyager and Flavia. Um, those companies will apply through the Ministry of Commerce and the Ministry of Commerce will, f will work with the Ministry of Health as well as the Ministry of Security to make sure that they're fully aware of the expected protocols now that we've extended the responsibility of being able to open and provide additional services to the public. I want to re-emphasize adherence to physical distancing protocols and other public health protection guidelines at all levels of operation and ensure consistency in messaging. Continued non-compliance to physical distancing protocols and public health protection guidance may result in suspension of service and imposition of extended curfew. 
Despite the plan for the gradual reopening of the economy, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney reminded the country that St. Lucia was not yet out of the woods. He urged members of the public to continue with caution as the island continues to battle COVID-19. We will not rest um, in our efforts to make sure that despite the results that we've had so far, that we are fully prepared. Um, corona has proven to be very elusive. And there are many times in which countries or communities have belie believed that they have won the battle only a couple of days or weeks later to find out that it had only taken a reprieve and it now had come back. So the fight's not over. I also want to say to you that we have to learn how to live with COVID. It is going to be required that we're going to have to open up the economy. We cannot keep our economy and our traditional way of life um, at abatement while we're doing this. But we've learned a lot about COVID. And we know that what the CMO and her team and PAHO and WHO have said are working. The public is urged to continue social distancing, staying home as much as possible, and practicing other hygienic practices advised by the Department of Health and Wellness to prevent the spread of COVID-19. For the Government Information Service, I am Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. The National COVID-19 Response Telephone held Easter Sunday saw some $2.5 million being donated to be used to provide the necessary personal protective equipment, PPE, required in the lines of duty for our servicemen and women who continue to work tirelessly in the fight against COVID-19, as well as to provide food supplies to the underprivileged in St. Lucia. We hear more from Anicia Antoine. The telethon also featured live at-home musical performances by St. Lucian artists, including Shane Ross, Rob Zai Taylor and Finesse, and Ronald Bohengson, who came together to support the cause. Currently, the National COVID-19 Response Telethon has raised in excess of 2.5 million EC dollars. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, expressed gratitude to all those who contributed to the success of the initiative. We have two sets of people that we're really working hard for, tirelessly, and those are the frontliners. And what makes them different is that they're certainly going up every single day and exposing themselves um, to this, in, this, this virus. And we're, we're fighting here to be able to raise monies, to augment what the government is already doing, but to take it to another level, to be able to provide them with the PPPE um, materials that they need, the, the face mask, the, the mask on their face, the gloves, the aprons, all these things are incredible, uh, incredibly important. I mean, if we have to run Victoria Hospital with a uh, full-fledged of staff and every single day that they're having to change their outfits, we're talking about over a million masks that we would need um, just to be able to, to service a three-month period of time. So now's the time to be able to raise the monies, to be able to purchase this equipment, um, materials, and bring it in and prepare our frontliners for what they're doing. Prime Minister Honorable sure Alan Chastney explained that the government has been working closely with the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association and the local farmers to put together a plan for the National Meals Program. Imagine how many farmers um, have lost the opportunity to sell their produce to the tourism industry. That's a very difficult uh, uh, market to be able to replace at this time. So we came up with this idea to merge these groups together and to get the chefs to create menus, healthy menus, using our local recipes, our local products, uh, to start today to be able to disperse, I think it's 2,700 meals uh, to persons who are on our poverty list. And we're looking to expand that, and so by next week, we're looking to start off with about 5,000 people that we want to be able to feed a day. And the goal is to be able to raise that to 10,000 people a day that would be getting at least one meal prepared by these uh, incredible chefs, talented chefs from St. Lucia, who are working with our farmers. The National COVID-19 Response Telethon took place live on the National Television Network and other supporting media houses island-wide on April 12, 2020. A GoFundMe campaign has been set up for a 30-day period for anyone who may want to contribute towards the cause. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. We'll be right back. Wash your hands. 
Wash them before. Eating or handling food or caring for infants, sick or elderly people. Wash your hands. Wash them after. Using the toilet, touching raw meat, handling pets and livestock, playing outdoors, cleaning or handling waste and garbage. Wash your hands. Wash them often. You are going right when you make a habit of washing your hands several times a day. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. The COVID-19 pandemic has pushed a number of sectors into digital operations in an effort to continue business during these challenging times. The education sector is no different as the Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development announced that Term 3 of school will be undertaken virtually. We have more in this report. As the world continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic, Minister for Education, Innovation, General Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigabert, highlighted that no one is certain as to how the situation will unfold. The minister addressing the nation on Sunday, 12 April 2020, indicated that ministry officials have been dialoguing with stakeholders and based on discussions, the ministry has decided to undergo the third term of school virtually. The third term will be a learning from home term. We can all agree that these are challenging times and the way we deliver to or serve our students in the education sector of necessity will change. Already, I have seen remarkable demonstrations of creativity and innovation by our educators. The proposed interventions will require us to be even more flexible and nimble as we seek to ensure that our nation's children are not disadvantaged and that instruction is provided in a manner that ensures no child is left behind. The minister explained that provisions are being made to ensure the delivery of virtual classes via various means. On the instruction front, what is being proposed by the ministry assumes a multifaceted approach or blended learning or teaching modality using a mix of media including television, radio, and online platforms, activity sheets, and student textbooks. Interventions will be differentiated based on grade levels and forms. In the coming days, the ministry will advise on the protocol for collection of activity sheets and textbooks which would have remained at some schools. The minister noted that the move is not without its challenges as a survey conducted indicated that many students and teachers alike were not equipped with the educational devices or internet connection to allow for online learning and teaching. Consequently, Minister Honorable Dr. Rigabert noted that the ministry is exploring several avenues, including training for teachers as to the use of various virtual platforms and programs, working with telecommunications companies and the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, NTRC, to facilitate internet connection and to provide support for parents and students during this difficult time. It is being proposed then that the third term commence on 20th April 2020. The week beginning 13th April will afford administrators and teachers time to meet virtually to plan each school's operational intervention and to undergo training, upskilling and retooling in the use of digital and media technologies. Though, admittedly, several training sessions have been conducted in the use of various platforms, it is necessary that more targeted sessions on the use of the platforms be convened. The Ministry of Education indicated that parents are needed now more than ever to ensure that their children are encouraged and assisted in the continuation of their studies. We now join Primus Hutchinson for today's novel, Aquayol. 
Monsieur, Madame, département qui est responsable pour les formations en gouvernement, c'est le CIGIS, c'est GIS, à son appui télévision nationale PIA NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle en Coyol. Posé une Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasney, j'ai bien pu cette le à ce moment-là qui gouvernement j'ai bien préparé pour adresser situation qui a élevé cette li en écosse des maladies corona. Durant une adresse dimanche passé, Premier ministre Chasney placé confiance en nation qui tout ça qui nécessaire qu'a fait pour protéger pays contre mauvais mauvais maladies ça là. Mais en même du temps, il remercie autant tout travail et santé et leurs citoyens qui a travaillé pour tenir le pays sans les sauver et pour traiter et assister les gens à diverses façons. Le Premier ministre Chasney a déclaré que le gouvernement et le ministère de la Santé ont préparé pour si un cas malade à la vie en troisième stage. Il dit que l'année a tout facilité en place dans ces divers hôpitaux dans le pays. Le Premier ministre a remarqué que ces docteurs ont payé Cuba ont préparé pour établir tout ce qui est nécessaire pour conduire le travail en celle-ci. Il a aussi qu'il y a un monde pour aider à défricher n'importe quelle interprétation en créole pour ces patients-là qui ont été traités. Mais à part de ça, le premier ministre Chasney qui a fait cette leçon savent que c'est faut qu'ils comprennent aussi que nous avons été pour apprendre, pour vivre et puis maladie ça là, pour tenir l'économie cette leçon vivant. Il faut aussi féliciter la majorité de cette leçon qui a suivi ce qui est en place pour protéger les peuples contre la maladie du corona. Le premier ministre a vu qu'il Malgré l'année, yon de moun ki ka kontine pou désobéi se wèk sa la. I twe ple pou wèk ki si kantite set li sien ki ka aji twe bien. E pi se wèk la. Gouvernement sa se se wèk la, gouvernement sa etabli pou poteje pep set li si. Premier ministre la fè yon apel pou lot set li sien indike yo ki pou kon sa kompren. I konseye pou pa hele de yo, me sepliman pou fè yo fè se edividi sa la kompren et conseiller à ce qui est important pour protéger Koyo et la famille aussi. En parlant de ça, le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney, j'ai fait un annoncement qui, à ce rapport qui sorti, le chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belma George, gouvernement Jadako, pour continuer et puis confier un pays, et pour longer sorti le 13 pour le 26 avril 2020. Devant ça, le Premier ministre a annoncé que le business hardware et le business qui a vendu le matériau a opéré sa préparation pour si le carême a continué et aussi en préparation pour ce cyclone l'année ici. Parmi ces business matériaux et services qui a opéré, c'est SNS, Voyager et Flavor. Le Premier ministre a cru que ça a protégé l'occasion pour les gens qui ont acheté ces diverses sacs nécessaires pour divers matériaux et les nécessités. Ça, c'est une nécessité en préparation pour la saison cyclone et quand même. Le Premier ministre Chasney a encore fait un gros appel pour les citoyens obéir au protocole qui a placé, qui a place pour tenir distance hors de la pour respecter la protection qui est en place pour cette public pays contre la maladie du corona. Le Premier ministre Chasney a fait un peu si les gens continuent pour désobéir au gouvernement, ça, c'est désobéir au gouvernement. Il n'y a pas d'autre choix, mais pour suspendre le service de ce business-là, qui est en place, et que l'on joue à ce qu'on fait, qui est en place. Le chef officier de l'éducation, Dr. Fiona Maya, a déclaré que le ministère de l'éducation a coopéré très bien, et puis le ministère de la Santé a eu réponse pour la COVID-19, et bien ça nous connaît plus mais qu'on a maladie de Corona. Il y a une discussion sur l'NTN, à ce moment-là, le secrétaire pour moi, le docteur Mayer, a déclaré qu'il a très apprécié ce sacrifice que les instituteurs ont fait pour assister les étudiants pendant le Yohankai pour protéger contre la maladie. Selon le docteur Mayer, ce qui est plus important toujours, c'est l'effort qu'il a fait pour assister les étudiants, pour servir la technologie, pour suivre ces listes de l'école que le ministère de l'Éducation a établi devant ça. Le docteur Mayer a fait comprendre que tout service média est important pour assister les étudiants pour suivre ces leçons qui sont en place pour eux. Mais le chef officier de l'éducation a avoué que le ministère comprend la situation côté ces instituteurs qui ont été brisés en support parce qu'ils ont été brisés en divers équipements et technologies pour faire une initiative venir en réalité.
Nous n'y pouvons garder la radio. Nous savons presque mm -hmm. toute famille n'y a radio. Mm -hmm. Nous savons encore pas ni mon ni télévision. La mm -hmm. ni, la style ni mon cette liste qui pas ni qui pas ni limier. Mm -hmm. so, et nous n'y pouvons garder différentes manières. Donc so, c'est pour ça nous te parler à bord. Nous qu'aille print, nous qu'aille ni packages pour ces monde. Parce mm -hmm. que nous n'y pouvons garder tout le monde. Nous garder situation y en est. Mm -hmm. Et avec comment est nous ça joigne nous, comment est nous ça aide nous, comment est nous ça supporte nous. Là il vient pour les étudiants qui moins capables qui n'y puisse assistance, qui a un qui est en place, et qui ministère, j'apprends tout ça en considération. C'est le docteur Mayer, ministère, j'ai demandé les maîtres et maîtres de l'école pour fournir une liste de ces étudiants de salaire. Mm -hmm. liste là, ce n'est pas pour garder qui est qui n'y est, qui n'y est pas. Mm -hmm. liste là, c'est pour aider. Nous savons l'année des fois moun qui j'a fait pet travail nous savons des fois moun ka yo j'a brûlé, nous savons l'année en chai bagay qui a fait nous savons maman nous qui te ha ni situation avant ça te fait. Mm -hmm. So pour garder ça, nous ni l'argent pour l'école là, nous te ka bay l'école là à manger pour ce maman là te te ça, ça joine à manger chaud mm -hmm. tous les jours. Mais nous ka garder l'autre manière pour nous ça essayer pour aider ces mêmes ces maman ça là. Parce que nous savons, en famille qui pani, qui pani manger, ou savez tout papier l'école, ou y la kayo, mm -hmm. ça va faire un yen bayo, parce que mm -hmm. nous n'y pouvons garder pour bouder nous avant. Mm -hmm. So nous n'y pouvons garder pour comment nous nous essayer pour un ce moment ça là. Et nous j'en ai un plan, quand nous ça parler tout plan ça là, um, en parmi nous, en parmi l'autre, dix fois en monde, nous kay ça dit, mam, mam, qui qui a identifié, mm -hmm. si aussi, moun, comme une tia connaît moun, yo ça un dé. Nous avons encouragé tout le monde pour faire un coup de main, pour aider. Mais quand nous avons une éducation aussi, nous avons un plan pour supporter ce moment là Ministre de l'Éducation, Dr. Gail Rigobert, j'ai annoncé que le troisième thème de l'école a commencé le 20 mois d'avril 2020. Et merci, madame. Quoi, nous, 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 c'est quoi ça, nous, avons une nouvelle là Je vous remercie autant pour que vous nous avez une invitation pour que vous nous encore. Si vous conservez la vie, vous pouvez vous donner Merci, Appeal Primus. The Ministry of Health and Wellness, in collaboration with the Office of the Prime Minister, launched a website on April 9, 2020, as a dedicated platform for COVID-19 information. This aims to provide the public with information and recent updates on the COVID-19 pandemic within St. Lucia context. The website will be managed and updated at 12 noon daily. The website will provide the following content. A dashboard with recent global and national COVID-19 statistics, audiovisual products to support the COVID-19 response, educational material on COVID-19, interviews and statements from stakeholders on St. Lucia's response to COVID-19, and contact information for assistance with COVID-19 response. The website can be accessed on the World Wide Web on the site www.covid19response.lc. For further information, please contact the Bureau of Health Education at 468-5342, 468-5349, or 468-5318. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.